where you take any mp3 be able to loop any section slow it down in one percent increments and also change the pitch not just in semitones but in sense which will allow you to really fine tune any songs that are out of tune so the first thing you need to do is download the software transcribe you open up transcribe then you click up here and you can search for any music that is on your computer so i'm going to open up that and this is the basic interface so very simply to loop a section just click and then slide across. Then press space to play. So to slow it down, you can use these boxes up here, which as you can see, are no better than YouTube. So to, in order to move down in 1% increments, we go down to this cursor and move that down. As you can see, we're moving down in 1%. Okay, so I'll just play that now. Then if you need to raise or lower the pitch of a record, which is fantastic if you're a vocalist and you're wanting to move a song into a key that you're more comfortable with, or if you're a guitar player and you want to play something like Jimi Hendrix and you're on your standard tuning guitar and you just want to move your Jimi Hendrix track, which is generally an E flat, you can just move up one semitone and there you go, you're in standard tuning. So to do that, there's a slider just underneath the, um, the, the tempo. So if I move that back up to 100%, and this is our slider that goes up uh, plus one, which is one semitone, go up in semitone, plus two, which is a tone, a tone and a half, and two tones, etc. Okay, um, and yeah, it's, it sounds really good too. Now, there are some tracks that aren't actually in concert pitch. We can actually move them into concert pitch, which is amazing. So let's open up a song now that I know isn't in standard tuning. Okay, so this is the, the track in question. Um, I'm just gonna loop the first uh, part. So let me just go up to that point. Now, if I play that again. And I can just drag that across. You can see, just match that beat. Cool. Okay, then what I need to do here is I need to go up to this button here, which is FX. I click on that and it brings me up to this. So I know this first chord, it should be a C. So what you do is you go to this reference note and it's saying the pitch, okay? So just by using this slider, I can change the pitch, which hopefully you can just see in the bottom. And um, it was actually uh, by default on C, which is what we need, okay? So this is concert pitch C. But if I just put play note, it will just give me this uh, lovely MIDI sound. When I play the track and move this cursor on the other side, where it says sense, up and down until I match my C major chord with our reference C note. So let me play the track, play, then I'll just click that again. Now if I put play note, if I move this cursor, That sounds about right to me. Now I can unclick that. Okay, and now we're in standard tuning. And then I can save it by going up to here and clicking save. So here's some extra bonus features that I use all the time. So the first one is actually to mark in my workflow. So every time I come back to this track, I don't have to redo things. It's all there. I can see where the bars are, where the different sections are. So let's show you that. So if I go back to the beginning, so every time I push space key, it's going to start and stop. Okay, um, so if I go back to the beginning, you can see this red arrow, and I'm gonna push play, and every time I push M while the track's playing, it's gonna punch it in this little marker. So this is gonna give me, maybe I just wanna put where the bars are to begin with. Okay, so if I push space. You can see at the top. And so on. Okay, so I can do that for the whole piece or a particular piece that I'm working on, or a section. Then I click and drag, and that will give me a loop. And if it's not quite right, I can zoom in to see the wavelength a bit better. And then I can just move that a little bit, you know, quantize it, and it to my liking. And then I can move these again just by moving, clicking on them, and then dragging them. Simple as that. 
Now I've got my perfect loop. And then if I wanted to mark down, okay, this is the start of my intro. I can go right click, edit this marker, and then label it as intro. Okay, and then say that's the start of my verse, edit this marker, verse. Um, then I can do that for the whole piece, then click save up here. And then every time I open this file up, it's actually gonna have all my markers already in there. So that improves workflow, really speeds up the process. There's a load of other features on this software, but I'm just going through all the basics, the ones that I use all the time. I'd love to know if anyone else uses this software that they can comment below. I know there's this feature where you can take out frequencies and boost frequencies. So if you're a bass player and you want to boost the bass frequency to hear it better, that's a great feature to have. But yeah, let me know in the comments below which ones you find useful. Now, if you're a guitar player and you actually want to transcribe this onto an actual software, I use Guitar Pro. Again, there's a link in the description below with an affiliate link. So I get a small kickback with no extra cost to you and also with the transcribe software as well. So for £29, you get so much and it's helped me massively as a guitar player and a musician and, a, and as a teacher. And if you're a guitar player, check out my other videos and consider subscribing. And I'll see you in the next video.